Hello and welcome to another episode of Death by Bungie Crossbow Appreciation Month continues. And I'm going to do a video about broadheads in this episode of Death by Bungie. Just got back from the Death by Bungie second ever meet and greet, which was a rousing success. Very happy with that and anxious to show the videos and a lot of interesting stuff coming up. You saw a video where I told you about my daughter's broadhead of choice. After a little bit of talk and a little bit of research and giving the matter some thought, we actually got her a broadhead that turned out to be a really good broadhead. I like it. 150 grain Rage Tripan crossbow. It is the two inch plus cut. Showed these to you in another video. Make sure you go check out that video if you haven't already. One thing I want to tell you about that video and this video is that if you are interested in Death by Bungie gear, the gear that I use. I am not sponsored by anybody. You know that from previous episodes of Death by Bungie. If you are a friend of Bungie, you've heard me say that more than once. Not sponsored by Rage. I just like their products. I'm not sponsored by Excalibur. I just like their products. That's all it is. So you're getting the honest scoop from me when I tell you something like that. And you can do with that as you see fit. I don't see any reason why you should absolutely shoot Rage broadheads. On the other hand, if you choose to do so, if you are interested in them, if you want to try them out, if you want to buy some, or if you want to stock up on your already existing collection of Rage Broadheads, consider going to the deathbybungie.com website and checking out my gear page. If you purchase something through the Amazon affiliate links there, then you don't pay extra for the product. I want to make that clear. However, somebody gives me a referral fee for anything that I refer as far as business is concerned. So that certainly will help Death by Bungie. If you want to do that, please check out that website and the links that I provided on there. Enough of the sales pitch, right? I just want to share with you what the broadhead looks like. This is the Rage Crossbow Hypodermic. I love this broadhead. I have been using it now going on the third season with this broadhead. It is my broadhead of choice. It is the broadhead that I used after research on them and trying out different broadheads. I decided that this was the broadhead for me. It was based primarily on accuracy. If you look back at the history of Death by Bungie, when I started out, I was using fixed blade broadheads. By the time I got onto YouTube here and started putting together these videos, I was using these broadheads, the X-Act from Excalibur. These broadheads served me well. I got pass-throughs all the time. They were intact. I like the chisel tip. I like the fold-down technology. I really had no problem with these broadheads, except I did eventually have one. After numerous shots, probably literally dozens of deer killed with this broadhead and hogs, everything else, I ended up having one that didn't open. Now, I found the deer. That video is on YouTube. It wasn't as though I'm guessing that the broadhead didn't open. I'm not using that as an excuse. The broadhead, in fact, didn't open. I found it, found the, the deer, and the hole created by this broadhead was no bigger around than my pinky. So that tells me the broadhead didn't open because it didn't pass through, broke off in the deer, found the whole contraption, and was able to make that conclusion. That alone, after shooting a couple dozen deer, someone made the comment back then, and I think this is true, that you buy a box of shells, there might be a dud in every box of shells, right? I mean, I've shot, I haven't shot an awful lot of firearms over the course of my life, but I have had duds as far as bullets are concerned. So it does happen with, with rifles. Why wouldn't it happen with crossbows also? I understand there's someone saying right now, well, it doesn't happen with fixed blade broadheads, but there are shortcomings of fixed blade broadheads, in my opinion, and I prefer mechanicals. The point of this video is just to show you how to properly install one of these on your arrow. Now, the reason I'm talking about this right now is I've got to dress up a few more arrows. This is my quiver that I brought back from the Death by Bungie, second ever Death by Bungie meet and greet, and you can see it's got a used arrow in it. In fact, it's got another arrow that is even more used, <laughs> right? This one's even more used, and these broadheads, they worked very well. The story of these arrows, the reason that there are two, is going to be revealed in the upcoming Meet and Greet video, the, the story of my hunt. So you'll get a chance to see that. You'll also get a chance to see my daughter Genevieve's hunt. How cool is that? These broadheads served me well. This is a good look at what they look like after they went through a 300 to 350 pound animal. And this went through a hog at the Death by Bungie Meet and Greet look at the condition it's in. For the most part, you could 
You could conceivably reuse these. I don't reuse them, but this is what they look like after they've been used. There is a shock collar on there, and I can show you, I'll zoom in on this the best I can to show you how it shows that this broadhead was deployed, how it deployed. It breaks through the little tabs on the shock collar. How cool is that? It's very easy to tell. And they hold them intact during flight. They hold this broadhead assembled during flight so it doesn't open up. In fact, they hold it very similar to this going through the air. Now, to show you how to install one of these things, because there are, people get confused about the collars, I still prefer this. They make a no-collar version of this, but I don't want to change this. I really like this broadhead. It has not let me down. I'm very happy with it, and I will continue to use these at least. There's some question about that. I'm going to do a video down the road about whether I switch broadheads. So I will share that information with you in the near future. It probably is going to be, it was intended to be part of Crossbow Appreciation Month, but man, I've just found so many other good topics to do videos about. I haven't had a chance to do the videos on the broadheads like I had hoped. But I want to share with you this video to make sure that if you choose to use these broadheads that you properly install them. Some people have told me, look, I get out to the tree stand and they're loose. They're probably not properly installed if that's the case. Let me share with you how I do that. All right, so get these guys out of the, you can see I've got, I'm stocked up on them pretty good. We can get them right out of the way. We won't need those right here. Here's your broadhead, okay? And this is what it looks like. This is the finished installed product, but I'm gonna go through it right now. We're gonna carefully get these things out of the way. They are very uh, sharp, so we gotta be very, very careful with that. To unhook them, what I typically do is I have my hands like this, but you gotta watch your fingers. And to unscrew one of them, you just grab it like this and unscrew it. It should come right out of there, no problem. If you're having problems with that, I don't know what, I mean, for the most part, as long as you're touching up in here, it can get sharp pretty quick, so you gotta be very careful. Don't poke yourself with the end of it either, very important. That chisel tip on these things, very, very, very sharp. They wiggle them apart here, and you can get them apart. Let's see if we can get this guy off of here. Um, I'm not too concerned about these things coming apart when you can't get them apart like that. This is the shock collar on these, and I'll, I don't know if I can focus, get that in focus any better than that, but they don't have the little grooves in them the way the other shock collars do. There are shock collars on the tripans that I showed you in another video. It is not the same thing. These go on multiple different ways. They have a variety of different notches in them, and the reason for that is you can... And hopefully I can share this with you. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to show up in this video or not. We're going to find out. I filmed the other one with my cell phone camera, and that seemed to work pretty good. But the important thing about these notches is, once you get the broadheads, the blades tucked in like that, you fit this over the ferrule. Feral. 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 <laughs> I got a comment in a previous video there that this is called the feral, not the ferrule. I pronounced it ferrule. Feral. For rule is one of those words that you read an awful lot, but not when you say an awful lot. So for the purposes of this video, it will now be called the ferrule. Feral. So hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. This tabbies that are in here, you can see how those have different tabs. And those tabs have to go over these little tabs that are on the blades. Okay. So what you do, you take those, and we just want to sort of straddle those tabs with this with the, in, not in the notches, okay? You don't install it in the notches like that. You want to install it so that the tabs go over the tabs on the broadhead itself. Those little tabs want to straddle the tabs on the, the little feet on the blades. Once that's the case, we can take our arrow, slide it over the ferrule, ferrule. and then we can tighten it down like this very carefully, and viola. Voila. Look at that. You have yourself a perfectly installed Rage Crossbow Hypodermic. Just tighten them up like that a little bit. Just a little snug. Just finger tight. Finger tight. And I showed you in the other video, before I shoot them, I just take them out and I give them a little quick shake like that and listen. Don't poke yourself in the ear with a very sharp tip. Don't cut yourself with a very sharp blade. Just very carefully. Just very carefully shake it a little bit. And if it jangles, makes a little noise, that means you need to grab it like this very carefully and tighten it up. But once it's tightened up like that, you are good to go and you have your properly installed Rage Crossbow Hypodermic Broadhead. With any luck, you get to put one through an animal, put one through a giant wild hog or something, and they look like this. And then you got a big old gash in that animal, and that animal becomes easy to find. <laughs> 
Well, I hope that's helpful. I hope you get an arrow all rigged up for yourself that shows you how to properly rig up one of these Rage Crossbow Hypodermic 100 grain broadheads. Again, check out deathbybungie.com. Sign up for the free email newsletter. It's free, for, first of all. It's also something you can unsubscribe from at any time if I'm sending you too much or if you change your mind and don't want to be a friend of Bungie, then you can certainly make that decision and unsubscribe from that email newsletter if you choose to do so. But I'd love to have you check it out. That way you can find out about future meet and greets. You can find out about other things going on in the kingdom of Bungie. Interesting crossbow and crossbow hunting related news articles. I share those on there from time to time. And you can also go on deathbybungie.com and see the details about my new book. The Death by Bungie Crossbow Story. Confessions of a Crossbow Hunter. In that I detail one of the reasons why I went to mechanical broadheads. That's part of the Death by Bungie Crossbow Story. Maybe it's part of your crossbow story also. Who knows? Thank you very much for being a friend of Bungie. And until next time, all hail Bungie! <laughs>